people talk about how AI is going to replace artists. Nah, Mr. Harrison Goldman over here is gonna replace all of them. Let's put that to the test, shall we? AI art is built on bootlegging art styles, but I say I can do better. From counterfeit Pokemon to the whole Nicktoons pantheon, I draw them all. So if an AI generates the ideas for what to draw in this video, then we see who's the better aesthetic chameleon, me or the machines, I can definitively answer the question. Can AI really replace us? Yet? Coming to you from beautiful downtown Fortitude Valley, it's the Harry Gold Show, with your host, Harry Gold. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the program. For anyone who's been living under a lead-lined, soundproof and Wi-Fi repellent rock, AI is a real hot topic these days. By which I mean up Twitter's opinions on the subject are so rife with brimstone you could sort a breakfast skillet on your screen protector. With AIs made by copying people's art, some folks are asking, is this ethical or even legal? Will it replace artists altogether? And was all that really worth it just for a Harambe Pixar poster? But now that I've made several videos drawing assorted pop culture art styles, my audience has some thoughts. People shouldn't be scared of AI replacing animators. They should be scared of Harry Gold. AI isn't gonna put artists out of business. You are, with your superhuman ability to perfectly capture apparently every art style under the sun. We should fear both. Aw oh, shucks fellas, I'm flattered. I think. Sun Tzu once said, know your enemy. So in that spirit, though I know some folks don't like people using AI for any reason, I think it's important to explore just how close AI actually is to replacing creators. I.e. me. And hey, if it turns out this ship really is going down anyway, what kind of YouTuber would I be if I didn't squeeze some kind of content out of the iceberg that sunk me? Besides, who doesn't like an iceberg video? And just to clarify, nothing in this video will be written, drawn, or otherwise generated by AI that isn't explicitly shown as such on screen. So let's get on with it. If we're going to see how the machines would run this show, first we need video ideas. Enter ChatGPT, the AI chatbot. Let's start easy with a subject the channel has tackled before. Dear ChatGPT, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm hoping you can assist me with something trying to come up with an idea for a side-splittingly funny YouTube video about drawing new designs for fake Pokemon. I would very much like to get your suggestions. Sincerely yours, Harry Gold. Hello, Harry Gold. What a delightful idea for a YouTube video. Creating new designs for fake Pokemon sounds like a blast. How about a few suggestions to get those creative gears turning? Alright, you amiable Skynet wannabe. Hit me with your best shot. It's basically assimilated the whole dang internet, so that must include the third of the Onion's art and the 15th of Cracked.com that are actually funny. At the very least, it couldn't be a worse writer's room than Kimmel's, right? One mismatched features Pokemon. Imagine a Pokemon with features that just don't seem to match. Maybe it has a fish tail, eagle's wings, a lion's mane, and a duck's bill. All in one. The struggle of this confused creature trying to find its identity could be a hilarious storyline. What, you thought the normal response to the existential anguish and anxiety of this miserable mutant was sympathy? Think again, you bleeding heart milksop. We point, and we laugh at its suffering. That is the comedic genius of ChatGPT. Disconcerting virtual schadenfreude aside, the next step is to compare the human's illustration of the concept to how the robot hive mind renders the same idea. Despite being a more arbitrary hodgepodge of animal parts than a discount frankfurter, we do need at least some cohesion in order for this affable abomination to leastways resemble an actual Pokemon. Between the line style and shading, I'd like to think my take is suitably plausible as an example of the game's official art style. But what do the overgrown calculators have to say about this same friendly freak? I'm using Bing's free DALI 3 powered image creator. I'd love to say this is some self-important statement about refusing to pay mid-journey to steal art, but I'm just a cheapskate. Dear Bing image generator, I would very much appreciate it if you could please generate for me a new Pokemon design comprised of a lion's mane, a duck's bill, an eagle's wings, and a fish's tail. Warmest regards, Harry Gold. Huh. I guess Bing's not much of a conversationalist. Let's try again. See, I do think this is fascinating. 
On the one hand, there is an effective facsimile of technical proficiency here. It's detailed, the shading is slick, he's walking on Studio Ghibli water like some kind of Jesus lion. C.S. Lewis, eat your heart out. It looks professional at a glance, and believe you me, that's not what anyone wants to hear when they've spent hours painting up what this miserable automaton can regurgitate in a few seconds. But, on the other six-fingered hand, if we look any deeper than a glance, we see where the AI starts to struggle. And I don't just mean with things that everyone knows about, like manufacturing the correct number of digits, or wings, or ears, or physical attributes. These things gobble up existing images and hoik up a sort of remixed average of them. Not only does that cause a predictably high rate of woefully generic designs, but the AI are also hamstrung by gaps in their knowledge. And believe it or not, there just aren't that many photos of flying, fish-tailed lion ducks for Bing to reference. So as a result, none of these actually have a duck bill or a fish tail. It just either awkwardly brute forces everything into one transporter accident style monstrosity, or otherwise keeps them separate despite the prompt. Which leads to truly baffling artifacts. Like, what's even going on here? What the hell is this supposed to be? Why has it got a half duck bill, half tongue hanging out of its mouth? And what on God's big blue bowling ball are these things? Well, let's try another one of ChatGPT's suggestions. Hello, invisible Pokemon. You Pokemon that's entirely invisible and tries to convince everyone it's there. I guess we're laughing at existential crises again. How am I supposed to draw something you can't see? You could play with the concept of invisibility in funny situations. We're like trying to battle, and the opponent has no clue where to aim their attacks. It really is hung up on trying to inject a plot into this thing, isn't it? Alright, invisible Pokemon? Easy. Done. Next. Three. Literal object Pokemon. How about a Pokemon that looks like an everyday object? Maybe a toaster Pokemon that shoots toast as his attack, or a couch Pokemon that makes opponents fall asleep when they sit on it. Because everyone loves Pokemon that are just ordinary objects. For the non-Pokemon enthusiasts watching, that was sarcasm, the highest form of wit. Pokemon fans actually don't like those very much at all. Consider yourself elucidated. We're also three dot points deep, and I'm not really detecting the comedy here. Are toasters funny? Is a two-slice Cuisinart Gen Alpha's hot new meme baffling Zoomers everywhere and nobody told me? Forget Ohio, we toast posting now. <laughs> A lot of Pokemon designs fuse objects with animals to create adorable new atrocities against nature. As such, my approach for making a toaster, both pocketed and monstrous, was to utilize its lever as a key animal feature. It's like a sort of double entendre, except visual, and without the usual accompaniment of sniggering manchildren. Meanwhile, given a less complex prompt, free of unreasonable requests like limbs and toes, Bing has produced something more functional this time. So long as you don't mind bread that's not in the slot, or carving through the wrong direction. And why are they all standing on even more slices? It seems the automated artist can get as far as Pokemon adjacent easily enough, but has trouble broaching the kind of authenticity you could mistake for an official illustration. While any fan of the series would know the style I mean, the AI has to contend with the veritable glut of Pokemon imagery hurtling down the information superhighway. 3D models, sprites, several 2D styles, animes, movies, concierge, cafe mix, smile, quest, rumble, let alone all the cards, the web's infinite miasma of fan art, and every other art style that Dali 3 has gorged itself on. As a result, the Pokemon art style gives us a range of generic, vaguely Japanese looking toon styles, hence these overly robotic designs with how to draw manga book faces. Even name dropping Ken Sugimori, the original Pokemon artist, doesn't help at all. That authenticity is what I'm always striving for personally, so if it's something human artists can do that the machine struggles to replicate, at least for now, that's good news for Team Humanity. And Lord knows Team Humanity could use a little good news these days. I also tried Pokemonetizing a couch at the AI's behest. As they say, gotta couch em all. The joke is that the Pokemon catchphrase is gotta catch em all, but we substituted the word catch with couch. And I think I managed to upholster a serviceable result. The AI got so lost, however, that it bypassed art styles altogether and gave us photographs of the Pokemon merch it ordered on Wish.com. These are just inanimate objects, and they don't even look comfortable. Disqualified. Oh, fantastic Pokemon. Create Pokemon based on puns or wordplay. Hold the phone. 
Did ChatGPT just make a decent suggestion? Puns and wordplay are an actual form of comedy. And Pokemon's already full of them. Got a turtle that squirts water? That's a Squirtle. Big and made of coal? Must be colossal. Dog made of bread? I think you mean Fido. It's basically Dad Joke the Video Game. In fact, I already made a whole video on precisely this premise, using names of IKEA products as Pokemon. Valentuna sounds like Valentines and Tuna. Drabbling sounds like Drab and Duckling. And so on. I guess I owe ChatGPT an apology. It must understand comedy after all. So what kind of Poke puns have you got for us, buddy? He's an owl Pokemon. That's an owl detective. Or a pasta sauce Pokemon that looks like a dinosaur made of different types of pasta. Well, that's great, ChatGPT, except for one teensy weensy itty bitty little snag. Those aren't puns! Alas, it looks like Matrix Jr. here fluked his one decent idea. Sherlock Owl is not even close to being a Pokemon type name, nor does Owl sound anything like Holmes. From a design perspective, however, finding combinable elements in these two random concepts does make for an interesting logic puzzle. Like forming the owl's tail into a pipe, or making its wings and head resemble Holmes's signature outfit. Meanwhile, in Bingtown, USA, these are probably the most competent illustrations yet. Even with four wings, no legs, and a magnifying glass that might also be a crack pipe. While it has successfully adorned these owls with a Holmesian ensemble, it's whiffed on coalescing these ideas into a single cogent design. Some Pokemon's parts may resemble clothes, but you won't find them stocking up at the local Forever 21. Then there's Pastasaur, ChatGPT's other certifiably pun-free pun. Amalgamating both concepts might give you a Spaghetti Stegosaurus with meatballs for spikes, or a Brachiosaurus with a long macaroni neck, or a Tyrannosaurus whose spines are the edges of a ravioli. I haven't seen this many Italian dinosaurs in one place since the Irishman came out. Bing, however, can frolic in pasta, tangle with pasta, garnish with pasta, and garnish on pasta, but struggles to actually marry these ideas. If an unsolicited merging of dinos and dragons with one too many nostrils is what you're looking for, though, the AI has you covered. Okay. Evolving Pokemon. Designing Pokemon that evolves in the most absurd and unexpected ways. Maybe it starts as a tiny blob and evolves into a giant umbrella or a small rock that transforms into a treehouse. You know, I'm getting the impression that true peak comedy, according to ChatGPT, other than delighting in the misery of mere mortals, of course, is just haphazardly combining random things. What if a lion had a duck bill? What if a dinosaur was pasta? Now a blob? Not funny. But a blob that's an umbrella? Somebody call Netflix. This man needs a mildly controversial stand-up special. Despite the fixation on mundane non sequitur, in order to be plausible as a real Pokemon evolution, it should have at least some thread of continuity. Shut up, Remoraid fans, I don't want to hear it. It looks like we've finally found Bing's niche, though. The blob is so simplistic and amorphous and totally generic that I guess it just couldn't mess up the anatomy. As for the umbrella, setting aside minor hitches like uneven numbers of digits, bent hot dog fingers, and non-face have, I'd say these are the closest to actual Pokemon-style designs, rather than non-name brand anime mascots, that we've seen yet. That said, Bing's allergy to keyword combination has somehow resulted in dragons using umbrellas, instead of non-dragons being umbrellas. As for the rock and the treehouse, I've again tried to introduce some cohesion to this exceedingly arbitrary mishmash of concepts. They don't really have much in common beyond both being a variety of horror. Bing, however, has gone pal world on us. These aren't Pokemon made of rock, so much as bland Pikachu adjacent marshmallows onto which gravel has been hot glued. As for the treehouse, well, it's just a treehouse, with a staircase to nowhere, a ladder courtesy of MC Escher, and a whole bunch of almost Pokemon. Feel free to mix and match these ideas, or put your unique twist on them. I'm sure your creativity will bring some fantastic and hilarious fake just to see if it would give me anything more interesting, I tried asking ChatGPT the same thing again. First it suggested mixing a toaster and a giraffe, which is combining two random things. Then disguising Pikachu as a watermelon, which is combining two random things. Third, turning a pencil into a skyscraper, which is combining two random things. And then drawing a blob but with googly eyes, which is... Well, are we perhaps detecting a trend? It sounds like I've exhausted the machine's Pokemon ideas, so let's try another one of this channel's usual subjects. Fixing the abysmal drawings of characters in assorted art styles that Nickelodeon likes to retch up onto their social media. Hello, ChatGPT. Thank you for your previous assistance. 
I need to draw a Nickelodeon character in three different art styles. Could you please suggest a Nickelodeon character to draw, as well as three other Nickelodeon shows art styles to depict them in? Ever yours, Harry Gold. Hey, Harry Gold. Sure thing. Try Nickelodeon characters in various styles. Sounds like a blast. How about drawing SpongeBob SquarePants in different art styles? I guess I kind of walked right into that one. I've already done SpongeBob in these three art styles before. These diverse styles should make for a fantastic YouTube video. I mean, I'd like to think they did. Thank you, ChatGPT, but I perhaps should have been a touch more specific. Could you please provide a character suggestion that is neither SpongeBob SquarePants nor Lincoln Loud? Of course. How about drawing A for Mr. Clark the Last Airbender? A's character design offers a great opportunity to explore various art styles. Cat dog and fair. Fairly odd parents are good, but as Nickelodeon said once it saw Tough Puppy, that's more than enough Butch Hartman. One more style, please. Absolutely. How about trying the art style of Hey Arnold for a unique take on it? The catch of the whole fixing style swaps formula is we kind of need a style swap to fix. And unfortunately, I can't just dial up Nickelodeon and put in a request. If they were in the habit of listening to me, there wouldn't be anything to fix in the first place. But hey, nobody specializes in mediocre and soulless quite like AI does, so we'll let Bing take Nick's spot for this one. As per the way the unpaid interns usually go about this task, I asked for Aang dressed as Arnold, Timmy Turner dressed as Aang, and Aang merged with Catdog. In place of the former, I instead got a disturbing cartoon human hybrid, a bearded child cosplaying next to a Chinese bootleg, modern fashion Aang with Don't Hug Me I'm Scared Arnold, and college punk Charlie Brown. Timmy Turner came closer to the mark, but apparently Bing just doesn't even know who Catdog is. Now to my mind, the fairly odd parent style is the most straightforward one to tackle. Thick outlines, seal flipper hands, and a simplified geometric vibe. Bing evidently disagrees though. Somehow it actually regressed since the last prompt, resulting in chibification so insipid it could be a best-selling vinyl collectible. Hey Arnold is a bit trickier to pin down, but wide set eyes with bow legs and nothing much in the way of shoulders tends to be the norm in that world. But Bing stuck to its guns. Mediocre fan art is now the AI's life passion. While it may not resemble Hey Arnold whatsoever, it does feature a misaligned stick, a three-fingered fist, and what appears to be some kind of airplane disaster. Finally, Cat Dog is an aesthetic I haven't had to attempt before. It's one of those unpleasant 90s styles replete with shonky toothed overbites, misshapen eyes, and squishy looking noses. Bing, on the other hand, still has absolutely no idea what Cat Dog is whatsoever. Though, is it really missing out on much? I guess AI also has a bit of an SEO problem. When a comparatively obscure show like Cat Dog has relatively little material on the web to draw from, while there are enough photos of actual cats and dogs on Facebook alone to fill a couple of Mariana trenches, this inevitably leads to the machine getting bamboozled. Time for another topic. Taking pop culture characters like Shaun the Sheep and Jabba the Hutt and drawing them as if they were my own Sonic OCs is another concept I've covered a few times. Salutations, ChatGPT. If you'd be so kind, could you please furnish me with an amusing idea for a YouTube video wherein I draw a humorous new Sonic the Hedgehog character? Many happy returns, Harry Gold. Greetings, Harry Gold. How about this for a chuckle-worthy YouTube video idea? Create the Sonic Character Generator Challenge. Alright, I'm listening. Here's how it goes. One, wheel of words. Have it wheel or a list of quirky traits, like giant googly eyes, banana peel shoes, unicorn horn or spaghetti hair. Spin the wheel or randomly select traits to form your new Sonic character. Done. Two, drawing session. Draw the character on screen while discussing its abilities, personality, and backstory based on the chosen traits. Get creative and let the imagination run wild. Again, trying to inject a story into this thing. Fine. Its abilities are playing Weird Al songs, but exclusively the non-parody polka stuff that nobody really cares about, and attracting ants. Its personality is it's having an identity crisis. Because that's what you think is funny, right? And its backstory is it was bitten by a radioactive push pop. Happy? Three, audience participation. Encourage your viewers to suggest additional features or characteristics for the character in the comment section. I mean, it's it's kind of too late. I've already made the video that you're watching right now, but, but sure. Hey you, yeah you, what do you think would make a fun additional feature for this zany OC? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and remorselessly eviscerate that bell. Four, final 
Scorpion. After incorporating some of the audience's suggestions, unveil the finished creation and give it a fitting name. Oh, I'd love to, except I don't have my time machine handy. It already told me to draw the damn thing in this video. How am I supposed to incorporate audience feedback that hasn't even happened yet? ChatGPT knows there's a comment section, even that audience interaction is desirable, but it can't figure out how time works? Maybe it scraped one too many Christopher Nolan movies. So what does Bing have to say? Well, they're all just Sonic with cashew arms, back feathers, a gross little wonky extra horn, and a heaping helping of what the heck is that? So let's try this a different way. Top of the morning, ChatGPT. Could you please suggest a person or character from anywhere in history or the popular culture that you think would be funny to see depicted as a Sonic the Hedgehog character? Much obliged, Harry Gold. Absolutely, Harry. Picture this. Imagine Albert Einstein reimagined as a Sonic the Hedgehog character. You know, I was kind of hoping for something really out of nowhere, like Frida Kahlo as a Sonic character, or Ernest Hemingway, or Grover Cleveland. But while ChatGPT's best approximation of humor is selecting things at random, at the same time, it's weirdly not quite random enough. Not only are they mundane choices, but toasters, spaghetti, and blobs have all come up more than once. Then, re-asking this question kept giving me Einstein, Shakespeare, and Sherlock Holmes over and over again. And that's the second time Sherlock's come up, too. Here's the fun twist. What? Einstein, the Sonic genius. Transform Einstein's iconic wild hair into Sonic-style spikes, but in a slightly exaggerated, cartoonish manner. Okay, I'm with you so far. Give him oversized glasses with a high-tech futuristic vibe to represent his brilliance. And there it is. We're doing cartoon Einstein, right? Einstein is a smart guy. Cartoon smart guys wear glasses, so give cartoon Einstein glasses, right? Except Einstein didn't wear glasses. That'd make it less recognizable, which is totally self-defeating. How does this thing simultaneously know everything and nothing? Two, C equals MC squared speed boost. Incorporate elements related to his famous equation. Maybe he's equipped with gadgets or gadgets strapped to his belt that resemble scientific instruments. He's providing sonic-like speed boosts or unique powers. Yeah, but why though? Sonic characters don't have utility belts, and neither should this one. I guess Oppenheimer must have glossed over the part where Einstein was secretly Batman. Three, chaos theory chaos. That's actually kind of funny. To reflect his contributions to physics and his playful nature, give him some chaos emerald inspired experiments or gadgets that go awry in comical ways. So step two was give him gadgets, and step three was give him gadgets. We don't need more gadgets. Perhaps he creates chaos wherever he goes unintentionally. We don't need a plot either. Four, quirky personality. Is it more plot and gadgets? Showcase his playful and curious side by having him engage in experiments. That's plot. Or inventing quirky devices. And that's gadgets. Okay, we're done here. What does Bing think? Content warning. This prompt has been blocked. Our system automatically flagged this prompt because it may conflict with our content policy. More policy violations may lead to automatic suspension of your access. Jeez, leave it to Bing to jump straight to making threats. I guess we're not allowed to generate famous faces. If that's a no-go, I guess I have to fall back on our old, less ethically conscious buddy, Dali Mini. Now known as Crayon. I knew you'd come crawling back. <coughs> It's a bit of a step up from where it used to be, but the jank is still very present. I guess Slinky Fingers here is the best one, but all up, that's a mess. Now that we've got enough illustrations to make a video, what I need is a thumbnail. Dear ChatGPT, could you please give me a detailed description of a video thumbnail for a YouTube video about drawing fake Pokemon and Nickelodeon characters that will get 100 million views? Kisses and hugs, Harry Gold. Absolutely, Harry. Here's an idea for a thumbnail that can attract a massive audience for your video about drawing fake Pokemon and Nickelodeon characters. Title: Mashup Madness. Create epic fake Pokemon X Nickelodeon characters. I'm assuming that's an anime-style silent X. Thumbnail description. One. Split screen composition. Divide the thumbnail into two halves horizontally. Horizontally, huh? Bold choice. The upper half showcases your rendition of a hybrid slash fake Pokemon character, while the lower half features a Nickelodeon character mashup. That's not a whole lot to go off of. If it wants a hybrid, I guess I'll just combine two random Pokemon. How about, I don't know, uh, Bidoof and Skitty. Put them together and boom! 
Skibidi! Vibrant artwork. Each half should boast vibrant and engaging artwork. The Pokemon segment can feature a creature reminiscent of Pokemon traits. So a Pokemon that looks like a Pokemon. Noted. Very helpful stuff. Bright colors, bold features, and elemental cues. Bright colors, check. Bold features, double check. Elemental cues, well, it's definitely a water type. Check. The Nickelodeon portion can include a well-known character transformed into a Pokemon-like version with distinct traits merged from both universes. Yeah, that's simple enough. Who lives in a Pokeball under the sea? Three, attention-grabbing text. Thank Pokemon on one side and make two match up on the other. Four, artist persona. Insert a small character style image of yourself drawing in the center. Five, creative elements. Surround the main artwork with doodles, splashes, or bubbles reminiscent of both Pokemon and Nickelodeon themes. Not much for the minimalist approach, eh, ChatGPT? Let's take one last look at what Bing has to offer. Vertical split? Disqualified. No bright colors? Disqualified. Hey! Looks just like me. Nashoon, you say? Well, Bokokak indeed. So after going through this little experiment, here are my overall thoughts. Honestly, my biggest takeaway is, at time of writing, no comedian on this planet has anything to fear from ChatGPT. Not even Pete Davidson. They may well improve this thing in future, mind you, but so long as mashing its favorite random objects together is the best it can do, this AI will continue to have the comedic aptitude of a toaster full of spaghetti. Bing was more successful at its task, provided you don't expect its veneer of competence to be scrutinized at all, and aren't terribly choosy about whether it actually drew what you asked for. In fact, I saw shortcomings I hadn't even considered before. For one, if it just hasn't heard of what you're looking for, you're up the estuary without a spark plug. But it's also just not that great at taking even moderately complex directions. It's not even capable of taking feedback, which means you're at the mercy of what it wants to give you. And if you have even the tiniest shred of creative vision in your head, there's a good chance you'll never be able to get it to randomly generate something that happens to align with that. I think I'd go nuts if I had a specific idea but could only vaguely approximate it one dice roll at a time. That said, actually making stuff is the fun part for me, so getting it sweatshop manufactured is just boring anyway. That's why this video is about comparing my work to the AI's, instead of just impotently reacting from a little box in the corner. Now as the tech continues to advance, maybe these flaws will go away, but it's also possible some of them are just endemic to the way these AI's function. Only time will tell. Even though I suspect the lawsuits and attempts at stigmatization won't really have much of an effect in the long term, after watching the machines struggle as they have tonight, I find myself cautiously optimistic that human artists will continue to succeed and prosper in a world beset by AI. Which is a bit of a dry note to end on, so... Skibbity dub 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 yes yes, skibbity dub dub yes yes. A game. I'll draw someone famous, then three people that guess who it is in the comments will get a shout out in the next episode. If your guess for the caricature last time was the martial artist Bruce Lee, you are absolutely correct. Bruce's rule from the Wheel of Winners is... The three top comments according to YouTube that contain the correct answer. Rinkun Mori ran circles around the competition, landing first place. Pixelator 5 got second, fair and square. And Pikmin Fan 6778 threw themselves into it taking third. Well done everyone, thanks for playing. This week's subject displays eyebrows so dramatically downturned you could mistake them for the market value of your average bored ape. Meanwhile, with this much distance covered by their nose and upper lip, one couldn't safely drive from brow to chin without a rest stop in their left nostril. This person also sports cheeks so sunken they make the Lusitania look positively seaworthy. Now who could this be? If you know who that was, let us know in the comments. And perhaps I could prompt you to generate a like on this video. But this has been The Harry Gold Show. So until next time, stay safe and God bless.